Perfect. All right. So anytime we're doing um, conversions in chemistry, there's going to be a handful of prefixes that I want you to memorize. And I talked about that in the lecture video, right? And the ones I want you to memorize um, from the lecture video are shown um, highlighted here. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. I want you to memorize mega and kilo. And then I want you to memorize centi, milli, and micro. Those are the most common ones that you'll encounter, especially on allied health uh, career pathways. Uh, the other ones, like tera, you might be familiar with from terabytes in computers. Um, pico and femto are more common in um, things like physics and chemistry. Uh, but these are the ones that I would like students to know. Um, uh, one student was asking, do we need to memorize these conversions down here going from metric to non-metric units? And absolutely no. Um, I will give you any of the non-metric conversions on an exam or a quiz. So let's go ahead and work through uh, a few of these. So the first uh, question said, let's convert from 1.26 times 10 to the fourth centimeters to meters. So I always start out with what I know. And I've got 1.26 times 10 to the fourth centimeters. So now the question is, how many centimeters are in a meter or how many meters are in one centimeter? And I'll show you how I do this. I'd say, well, one centimeter has the prefix centi in it, right? And if we go up to that chart and we look at what centi is, I'd say, well, centi is 10 to the negative two, right? So it's basically interchangeable for 10 to the negative two. So I could go back down here and I could say, well, one centimeter is the same as 10 to the negative two meters. So essentially these right here are exactly the same. Okay, so now we've got that conversion factor taken care of. And I'm gonna try to cancel out centimeters. So should that go on the top or the bottom of this uh, fraction here? If I wanna cancel out centimeters. Bottom. Bottom, exactly. So I'll put centimeters on the bottom, that way it cancels. That means meters must be on the top. And when I go up here, I'd say, well, one is paired with centimeters. So I'll go ahead and put one down here. And then over here, 10 to the negative two is paired with the meters. So I'll go ahead and put that on top, right? So now we're set up where we can cancel out centimeters and centimeters. We're left with meters. And if we go ahead and we plug this into our calculator, um, it should give you, let's see, 1.26 times 10 to the second meters. And I like to box my answer at the end. And then I also double check that I followed sig fig rules. So over here, I'd say, well, we started with three sig figs. And then over here, I also have three sig figs. So that's good that we didn't gain or lose any sig figs during this entire process. Oftentimes students will forget about sig figs and even though they're getting the right number, they're not including the correct number of significant figures. Does that make sense? Okay, feel free to interrupt me. I know it's a little bit weird being in a Zoom meeting doing this, but you can always interrupt if something's just not making sense. Okay, so next one. Again, I'm gonna start out with what I know. So this one, I know that I've got 5.889 times 10 to the 17th microliters as my original value. And we're eventually gonna try to get that to kiloliters. So let's first identify what a microliter is. So I'd say one microliter must equal some number of liters. So let's go up to the chart again. So I'd go up to my chart and I'd say, well, micro is the same thing as 10 to the negative six. So I'd go back down kind of like we did before. I'd say, well, this must be equal to 10 to the negative six liters because we know this micro prefix that I've identified right here is 100% the same as this. So this will be one of our conversion factors that we'll use for this problem. But if you look over here, we're not trying to solve for liters, we're trying to solve for kiloliters. So let's try to define what a kiloliter is. So I'd say, well, one kiloliter has the prefix little k in front of it. So let's go see what that looks like. And kilo is 10 to the three, positive three in this case. So let's go in 
ahead and do the same thing down here. Let's say this is 10 to the third liters. And just like before, we know that these are exactly the same. We're just kind of swapping out that prefix for a number. So now we're set up to do the math. And just like before, I'm going to multiply by a fraction. And we want to cancel out microliters. So I'm going to put that on the bottom so that it cancels out. And just like before, one was paired with the microliter. So I'm going to put that one with the microliter unit, which means the one will go on the bottom. And liters would go on top. And we've got 10 to the negative 6 paired with that liters unit. So I put 10 to the negative 6 right there. So now we've gone ahead and gotten rid of the microliters. But like I said, we don't want to solve for um, microliters, or liters, excuse me, we want to solve for kiloliters. So I would want to get rid of the liters by putting that on bottom, and then I would want to put kiloliters on top. That way when things cancel, I cancel out those liters, and I'm left with my kiloliter unit. And just like before, I'd say, well, one this time goes with the kiloliter unit. So I'd put one on top with the kiloliter unit. And then I put 10 to the third down on the bottom with the liter unit. Make sense so far? Everything's canceling out and we've been left with the unit that we want. One thing students forget is occasionally I'll see a student where they put this 10 to the third on the top rather than the bottom. So what I really like to do is kind of like I did here with the purple circles, always make sure you match the number with the correct unit for your conversion factor um, and don't flip flop them so that they're upside down. And if we go ahead and we do this in our calculator, we would get 5.889 times 10 to the eighth kiloliters. Any questions so far? I was doing, uh, I, don't, I don't know if this is, I was doing it, I was putting, I was putting um, 10 to the negative three on top to the one on the bottom. Oh, I see what you're saying. So um, just in case this is, doesn't get picked up in the recording, you said you put 10 to the negative three up here with where the one is. In fact, yeah. that, would, that would also work. Um, that's another way you could do this. Um, essentially what you did was you said 10 to the negative third kiloliters is equal to one liter. Um, yeah. Which is essentially the same. We're just um, flipping it around a little bit. Okay. So as long as you're comfortable doing it that way, you're more than welcome to. I like teaching it this way just because we can always refer back to the chart. But as long as you get the right answer, that's more than fine. <laughs> yep. I have a question about exponent and why do we have eight in there? I, maybe I'm just not doing it right. So... Originally, we had 17, then minus 6, then 3. Uh, I thought that we're going to come up with 14. Where did 8 come from? Yeah, so let's do the first part. So right here, that would be 10 to the 17 times 10 to the negative 6, which would result in 10 to the 11th, right? OK. And then if we had 10 to the 11th multiplied by this, we would want to subtract out the 3. So it would be 11 minus 3, which would give you 8. So it would be 10 to the uh, 8th. Um, some students can do this really quickly in their head um, if they're good with um, scientific notation. Some students rely on their calculator a lot, which is also fine too. Uh, I always tell students, if you are going to use your calculator, make sure you overuse parentheses. Put everything into brackets. Otherwise, it's really easy to make a mistake where the calculator is actually misinterpreting um, how you're putting it in your calculator. Does that make sense? OK. Um, and then just like before, we've got um, four sig figs here. And we need to always end with four sig figs. This time, it's pretty easy because your calculator is going to spit it out with four sig figs. But it's always good to double check that we're following sig fig rules here. All right, next one. Next one's going to be pretty similar. It's going to have two unit conversions. So just like before, I'd say we're going to start with 8.47 times 10 to the negative 2 
kilometers. And for my conversion factor, I'll say one kilometer has the prefix K. And does anybody remember what K stands for? Kilo. Kilo, and it's 10 to the third. So we can go ahead in the chart and we can say, well, kilo was 10 to the third. So we're going to plug that in. So these are functionally equivalent. So it's one kilometer equals 10 to the third meter. And we'll use that for our first conversion factor. But then over here, we've got megameters. And this is an important case where we need to pay attention to capitalization. In this case, lowercase m would be milli, capital N would be mega. So one megameter has the prefix m, capital M. So let's go see what capital M is. We'd say, well, mega is 10 to the sixth. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. So we'd say 10 to the six meters. So these are exactly the same. So now I've got both conversion factors. So just like before, I wanna cancel out kilometers. So I'm gonna multiply it by a fraction, but make sure my kilometer unit is on the bottom. And I know I'm gonna to need to use this one because it's the only conversion with kilometer in it, which means meters must be on top. And one was paired with the kilometer unit. So I'll go ahead and put that on bottom. And then 10 to the three is paired with the meter unit. So I'll put that on top. So now we're set. We can cancel out kilometer and kilometer, and we've got meters left. But our goal is to get to megameters. So I wanna do one more conversion where I get rid of my meter unit, put that on bottom, and end up with my megameter unit. So now this allows me to cancel out meters, and I'm left with megameters. Okay. And then just like before, I'd say, well, one is with my megameter unit. So I'm going to put that on top to make sure it's aligned with the megameters. And then 10 to the six is with my meter unit. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on the bottom. So now I can go ahead and do this in my calculator. So we could say that the final answer is going to be 8.47 times 10 to the negative five megameter. And just like before, we started out with, whoops, three sig figs. And our final answer also has three sig figs. So we don't need to do any changing there. And then I like to box my final answer. Does this one make sense? If you do this in your head with the math, the easy thing to remember is uh, you can just add the exponents if they're in the numerator, but if they're in the denominator, you wanna subtract them out. So what I mean by that is negative two plus three, that gets you up to positive one, right? Positive one minus six gets you to negative five. So in some cases, you don't even need a calculator. You can just do that math trick in your head. All right, let's double check this next one now. So I've got 4.550 times 10 to the 12th milligrams. In this case, it's lowercase m. So one milligram has the prefix m in it. And M, we, I think we already said, is going to be equal to 10 to the negative three. So these are equivalent. And it's going to be 10 to the negative three grams. So this would be my first conversion factor. But just like before, we're not trying to solve for grams. We're trying to solve for megagrams. So I'd say, well, one megagram with a capital M is going to be equal to 10 to the six grams. So capital M, just like we set up above, is equal to 10 to the 6. So this would be my second conversion factor. So now we're set up to do the math. And I'm going to multiply by a fraction. 
and I want to get rid of mega or sorry milligrams. So I'll put that on bottom. That way it cancels out. And we would need to use this conversion factor because it's the only one that has milligrams with the lowercase m. And that means that we must partner it with grams, which will go on top. And one will go with milligram. So I'll go ahead and put that on the bottom. And 10 to the negative three will go with the gram unit right here. So now we've canceled out milligrams and we've got grams left over. But let's get rid of the grams now. So I'll go ahead and put grams on the bottom. I have a quick question. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, are the conversion, when you have a, like a multi-step conversion, is it always like the one on the top, like the grams in this case, is that always gonna be like one next to, um, to it? Because aren't we, yeah, we're converting from milligrams or yeah, milligrams to megagrams. So is it always gonna be like the right next to, does that, is? Yeah, so I think I see what you're saying. What I always do first, let's even back up a little bit, is I know immediately I wanna get rid of milligrams, right? So I put that on the bottom. And then I look at my conversion factors and I'd say, well, I've got two different conversion factors I can pull from, but the only one that has that milligram with the lowercase m is the yellow one, right? And then in the yellow one, we've got a comparison of milligrams to grams. So that means that grams must be on the top. And then we just wanna double check that the correct number is with the correct unit. But okay. what I normally recommend is don't try to do all your conversions in one step. Oftentimes it's easier to go to your base unit and then back out to your desired unit. So in this case, we're converting to our base unit, which is grams. And then once we get to grams, we can back out and try to find our way to milligrams. Okay. Yep. Good that question. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So now that we've got to our base unit of grams, I want to get my grams removed. So I'll put that on the bottom. That way they cancel. And we want our final answer to be in megagrams. So I'll put that on top. And in this case, one megagram has the one with it. And then 10 to the negative six is paired with the grams or sorry, 10 to the six, not negative six. So we'll put that on bottom. And we can go ahead and we can even try to do this in our head, right? So in this case, 12 plus negative three gets you to 10 to the ninth, right? And then 10 to, 10 to the ninth, uh, we would wanna subtract six away from, so that would leave us with 10 to the third. So some people can do it in their head, but if not, just get used to using your calculator. So it'd be 4.550 times 10 to the third megagrams. And just like before, we had three sig figs and we've got, or sorry, four, holy smokes. And over here, we need to have four sig figs. So this is one where students might make a mistake because if they do it in their calculator, it won't show the zero here, right? Because calculators don't always show those trailing zeros but that trailing zero is actually important due to sig figs, right? So we'll make a note here, keep. Important for sig figs. So that's a common kind of small mistake that students make. Any questions with that one? Nope, all right. I'll assume the silence just means that everybody understands everything. <laughs> All right, let's do the next one. Uh, we've got 29.73 inches and we wanna get that to centimeters. So this is gonna be an unusual one because inches aren't a metric unit. Metric unit for length is always gonna be meters. So let's go ahead and see if we can find a unit conversion for inches. And this would be one I don't want you to memorize. So I go to my chart and I'd say, well, right here, it actually gives you a straight conversion. It says that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So let's go ahead and use that conversion. So I'd say one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Okay. And just like before, we want to go ahead and cancel out inches. So I'll go ahead and put that on bottom. That way the inch unit cancels. 
and centimeters would go on top. Just like before, I'd say, well, one goes with the inch unit. So I'll put that on the bottom with the inch unit. And then the 2.54 goes with the centimeter unit. So I'll go ahead and I'll put that on top. All right, so let's go ahead and do our multiplication here. And in my calculator, I would get 75.51 centimeter. All right, so now the question is, do we need to do anything with sig figs here? Does anybody know? Is this our right answer? Or do we need to adjust it? We need to adjust it. Yeah, exactly. So this is kind of a tricky one. Over here, when I look at this, I'd say, well, this number has four sig figs, right? But this number right here has three sig figs. And we're gonna assume that this is a non-exact value. So what we need to do is we need to adjust this so that it has three sig figs. So I like to just underline these and say, well, there's three. And then this number is less than five, right? So this one right here, we don't need to round up because it's less than five. So what I would do is I would change this and I would say, well, this should be 75 Point five centimeters. That way, our final answer has the correct three sig figs. And I'm pretty sure the 2.54 centimeter to one inch ratio isn't absolute. I think that's an approximation. So we're just going to go with that assumption right now. But if it were on an exam, I would try to give you that additional information as well. Make sense? All right, let's try next one. Again, we're going from a non-metric measurement to a metric measurement this time. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm, no, you're I'm fine. I'm trying to get my mute button off there for a second. Um, at what point do we know when to um, put it in scientific notation or not? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, the truth is, unless the question says, please put it in scientific notation, I will accept either value. But let's just do this for fun. Let's go ahead and do this in scientific notation. So if I wanted to, what I could do is I could say, well, let's move this over, right? And if I were to move this over, I'd say, well, let's move this over one spot like that. We could write this as 7.55, and we moved it over one spot. So I'd say 10 to the one centimeters. Both of these would be perfectly acceptable answers in my book. Sound good? Yep, thank you. Yep, no problem. Wouldn't it be the negative one? Not quite. When you move to the left, it goes positive. When you go to the right, it would be negative. Another way of really quickly checking it is if you did this multiplication problem in your, your calculator, 7.55 times 10 to the 1, it should spit out this as a uh, right answer, right? So yeah, that's it. Right. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. I honestly, I have a PhD and I still mix that up sometimes. Um, it's embarrassing how poor my math skills got in grad school. So <laughs> let's do the next one. Got 185 pounds and we want to go to kilograms. So let's go find the conversion from pounds to kilograms. And this wouldn't be one I want you to memorize. Oops. So let's see. I've got one kilogram equals 2.2 .2 pounds. So let's go ahead and use that as our unit conversion. That was one kilogram is 2.2 .2 pounds, perfect. So one kilogram Oh, let's do it in green. We'll keep it consistent. Is equal to 2.2 pounds. So this will be my unit conversion for this next one. Um, and in this case, I want to cancel out pound, pounds, so I'll put that on the bottom. And that means that kilograms must be left on the top. And just like before, one would go with the kilogram unit. 
And that means that the 2.2 must go down on the bottom. All right. And just like we did before, I would look at this and I'd say, well, this has three sig figs. And this number with 2.2, let me actually write it down here, only has two sig figs. So how many sig figs should our answer have? Three or two? Two, exactly. So we can't have any more sig figs than our number with the fewest sig figs. So we can go ahead and multiply this out. So let me double check on my calculator. 185 divided by 2.2. And I'm getting a number straight out of my calculator that's 84.09090909 kilograms, right? Because we've canceled out our pounds, which leaves us kilograms left over. But we said it can only have two sig figs and the number to the right of it is less than five. So we're not going to round anything up. So in the end, what we can do is we can just say that this would be the same thing as 84 kilograms. Make sense so far? Oftentimes, this is kind of getting into nitty gritty stuff, so I'm not going to be super picky about this. Oftentimes, it's desirable to find a unit conversion that doesn't have fewer sig figs than your initial value. Otherwise, you're kind of wasting your precision and your initial measurement, right? But if you're kind of stuck in a corner and you're not given a conversion with more sig figs than your initial measured value, you still need to factor in the sig fig rules there. But in this case, it was the only one given to us, so we're going to stick with that. All right, let's do the next one. We've got 33.44 centimeters. We want to go to feet, OK? And let's go see if we can find some conversions for centimeters. So we're dealing with length now. And I see centimeters right here. And it says that we can convert centimeters to inches. But then down here, it says that we can convert inches to feet, right? So we may need to use both of these here. We don't have a direct conversion from centimeters to feet. So let's go down and do this next one. So one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Whoops. So this will be an important one because that will help us get rid of the centimeter unit. So I can put centimeters on the bottom, an inch on the top. 2.54 should go on the bottom with the centimeter unit. And one should go on top with the inch unit. So again, we're making sure the number is paired correctly. So now we've canceled out centimeters and centimeters, but we're not quite done yet, right? Because we want the final answer in feet. So that's where the second uh, unit conversion comes in. And we said that one foot equals 12 inches. And do you think this is an, a measured comparison or an absolute ratio? Does anybody know? It's actually absolute. So we'll just put a little asterisk here and say that this is an absolute ratio. And that just means you ignore sig figs when things are absolute. Kind of like if you had 12 donuts in a dozen, right? You're not measuring the donuts. It's a counted value. It's absolute. So we ignored sig fig rules in those situations. Okay, so okay. somebody asking something? No, no I, you know, I said okay. No, okay. Right. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put inch on the bottom so it cancels out and feet on the top. And one's going to go with my foot unit. So I'm going to put that on top here. And 12 is going to go with the inch unit down here. And we can go ahead and say that, whoop, holy cow. Let's put this into our calculator. So I've got 33.44 divided by 2.54. And then I'm going to divide that by 12. And I'm going to get a pretty big number out. 
one, one, two, eight, six, one feet. Okay, but we're not quite done yet. We haven't done our sig fig stuff. So if I look over here, this has four sig figs. This right here has two sig figs, or sorry, three. And then right here, we're going to ignore because it's absolute. Okay, so how many sig figs should our final answer have? Is there a lot of absolute values that we should kind of memorize? Not really. In general, I will give them to you. The most common absolute values, if we go up and look at examples here, would be something like this, right? So this would be absolute, meaning we don't use sig fig rules for that unit conversion because it's an absolute ratio of 10 to the negative three grams is exactly one milligram. Does that make sense? So those are the most common ones we'll run into. For metric to non-metric, I will tell you. Um, my goal isn't to trick you or anything. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I don't even know. Like, I'll be honest, I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure this has more units that you can keep on going on with, but this is just what the chart gave. So assuming uh, that we've got four sig figs for our first number and three sig figs for our first conversion, how many sig figs should our final answer have? Should have three, right? So what I would do is I would go ahead and look at this. And I would say, well, if we do that, I've got 1.09, but this number right here is greater than five, right? So what does that mean? Well, it means we need to still have three sig figs, but we need to round that next number up. So this is kind of a weird example. We're gonna round that nine that's next to it up to a 10. So it'd be 1.10 feet. But the good thing with this is this still has three sig figs in it, right? We don't wanna omit that last zero. Make sense? This one's a little tricky with the sig fig application and rounding. All right, we've got a few more here. Any other questions before we keep going? Nope. All right, so let's see the next one. So 9.445 gallons, and we wanna get that to centiliters. So let's go find gallons in our conversions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look for gallons up here. I see gallons, one gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. So we'll use that as a conversion. All right, but the tricky thing is they want us to solve in centiliters. So let's define what a centiliter is. Centiliter has the prefix centi, and on that table, it says that centi is equal to 10 to the negative two. So one centiliter should be equal to 10 to the negative two liters, because those two are equivalent. So now we've got both conversion factors that we need. So just like before, I'm gonna cancel out gallons by putting that on the bottom. And I'm gonna put liters on top because that's what we've got in this ratio here is one gallon equals 3.875 liters. Okay, so one is paired with my gallon unit. I'm gonna put that on the bottom. And then 3.875 is with my liter unit. So I'm gonna put that on top and that allows me to get rid of my gallon unit and get to my liter unit. And then next, we're going to centiliters. 
So I want to cancel out leaders. I'll put that on the bottom. And I want to end up with sent leaders, so I'll put that on top. That way, these cancel, and I'm left with my sent leaders. And one was paired with my sent leader unit. So I'll put one on top with the sent leaders. Then I'll put 10 to the negative 2 down here. And let's go ahead and do this on my calculator. So I've got 9.445 times 3.875 times 10 to the 2. All right, and I'm getting 3659.9375 centiliters. But we're not quite done yet. How many sig figs should our final answer have? Should it have this many sig figs? Probably not. I'm seeing some threes and some fours, so let's check. So this one right here, got four sig figs. This one right here, I've got four sig figs. The next one over here, this is an absolute ratio, so we don't deal with sig figs there. So this is telling me that we should have four sig figs total in our final answer, right? So let's go ahead and look at this. And I like to underline my sig figs. So I've got four sig figs here, but then this one to the right of it is greater than a five, right? So greater than a five, which means we round up. Okay, so just like above, I'm gonna go ahead and round that nine up. So we'll end up with three, six, six, zero. And I'm gonna leave my decimal there and we'll get centiliters. So I have a question on how we got to uh, the essentially the 3660. Mm -hmm. um, because I understand the multiplying across the top, but where does that 10 point or uh, 10 to the negative two come in? Well, how, what am I missing? I'm missing a step here. Yeah, so at this point right here, let me highlight it. We've canceled out gallons, right? And we've gone to liters. Right. But the question wasn't asking for liters, it was asking for centiliters. And so in this next step, we needed to cancel out these liters using a second conversion and get centiliters back out. And that's when we use this conversion factor. Is that making sense? Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, I think it comes to comes down to when the calculation occurs. I'm, I feel like I'm missing something. So you're saying then, you've got this set up the way I do, but the math, math is coming out different for you? Yes, that's correct. Okay, sorry, I, it, sometimes I'm not quite sure where the mistake is happening. Well, let's double check. First things first, I want to double check my, my notes might actually be a little wrong here. So let's check gallon to liter. 3.785, is that what I did? Oh no, that's what's going on. Sorry, let's double check our math here. 3.785, my numbers were a little off. And I'm going to redo this in my calculator really quick. So let's do this in our calculator together. So I like to multiply uh, all of the numerators first, right? So I would go ahead and do 9.445 times 3.785 times 1. So that's all the numerators multiplied? Right. And then I'm going to divide that in parentheses by all of the uh, denominators multiplied. So uh, make sure you use the parentheses. And we can assume that this is the same thing as over one, right? So I've got one times one times 10 to the negative two. And that gives me a new number, which is three, five, seven, four, nine, or sorry, point nine, three, two, five. Is that what you're getting? Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay, yeah. Oftentimes, it's just a calculator thing. And like I said before, um, I'm a big fan of overusing parentheses. So now we've got kind of the same setup, though, 
with four sig figs, but the number to the right of it is greater than a five. So we need to round up. So my answer was actually wrong because <laughs> I used the wrong conversion, but let's go ahead and fix that. It'd be three, five, seven, five, right? Because we would round up and our units would be centiliters. There we Makes go, sense. back on track, thank you. Yeah, no problem. And then if we wanted to, right? We could get fancy and use the scientific notation like somebody mentioned before, and we could say, well, if there's an assumed decimal here, we could move it three spots over. And we could say, well, this could be written as 3.575 times 10 to the third centiliters. Both of these would be acceptable answers for that one. Sorry about that. Sometimes when I'm scrolling, I mix numbers up. All right, the next one's uh, going to be a bit more steppy. Actually, I think the next three are. So let's bear with me on these. So the number we're given is 743.9 centimeters per minute. And I like to just show this as a fraction, right? So 743.9 centimeters for every one minute. So this is a rate problem but we're trying to convert to miles per hour. So first things first, I would try to figure out how can we convert from centimeters to miles, right? So let's do the dense distance conversion first, and then we'll deal with the time conversion second. So time conversion will be minutes to hours, but let's do distance. So let's find centimeters to miles or something that we can use for the distance. Okay, so up here, I would say, well, got centimeters to inch. And then, let's see, I've got miles to kilometers. So let's see if we can use both of these. So one inch is 2.54 centimeters. And then one mile is 1.61 kilometers. So let's go ahead and do that, 2.54 and 1.61. So one inch equals 2.5. Actually, sorry, let's go back up and do that one more time. I think I'm making this harder than it needs to be. We've got one mile equals 1.61 kilometers. So let's do that one first. I'm making this way harder than it needs to be. All right. But now let's take a look at centimeters. And I'd say, well, one centimeter has centi in front of it. And centi is the same thing as 10 to the negative two. So we've got this conversion taken care of. And then last but not least, let's define what's going on with kilometers right here. So one kilometer equals 10 to the three meters. So this one's gonna require a few steps to convert all of these, but we'll try to problem solve our way through which one we wanna use first, second, and third. But let's ignore minutes on the bottom right now. Let's leave time out of this and focus exclusively on length. So in the first step, I want to cancel out centimeters, right? Because that would allow me to do this conversion. And if I go and look at, well, which conversion has centimeters in it? Well, this one right here doesn't. The second one does though, right? So I would go ahead and do this one first. And I'd say, well, this is comparing centimeters to meters. And we've got 10 to the negative two meters for every one centimeter. So now we've done that one. And then in the next one, we can go ahead and say, well, let's cancel out meters. We wanna get rid of that. And we wanna get to something related to meters. So if I look at the unit conversions, this one doesn't have meters in it, so that's not gonna be helpful. This one we already use, so it wouldn't be helpful because then we'd just be going backwards. 
but this one might be helpful, right? We haven't used that one yet and it still has meters in it. So that's a ratio of kilometers to meters. So I put kilometers on top and meters on the bottom. We've got one kilometer for 10 to the third meters. So now we've canceled out meters and we've gone to kilometers, but we're not done yet. <laughs> now we can go ahead and say, well, let's get rid of kilometers. And we wanna eventually get to miles, right? So that's when we're gonna use this last unit conversion comparing miles to kilometers. So I'd say one mile equals 1.61 kilometers. So that allows me to cancel out kilometers, kilometers, and get to my final distance unit of miles. So we've done a lot of work so far, but we're not quite done yet. Next thing we need to do is convert minutes to hours. So how many minutes are in an hour? We should know this just without checking a, a chart. <laughs> Everybody's muted. 60. 60. So 60 minutes is equal to one hour. So that will be my last unit conversion. And this is gonna be weird because now if we go and look at it, minutes is on the bottom, which means to cancel it out, we actually need minutes on the top at the very end, right? So I'm gonna put minutes on top right here. That way, when we cross multiply, it'll cancel out, right? And that means we need hours on the bottom. So just like before, I'd say, well, 60 minutes would go on top, 60 with the minutes unit, and one hour would go on the bottom. And that leaves me with my hours unit left over. So now we've canceled everything out. This is an extra long unit conversion. But let's go ahead and do the math here. So I've got 743.9 times 10 to the negative two times one times one times 60. So I multiplied all of my numerators first. And then I'm gonna divide, but then start with parentheses, one times one times 10 to the third times 1.61 times one, and then close my parentheses. Okay, so let's see what we're getting out here. So I'm getting 0 0.27722 nine, eight, one, four miles per hour. Is that what other people are getting? Yep, perfect. All right, how many sig figs do you think we should have? And keep in mind, this is an absolute ratio, right? It's not a approximation, it's not a measured value. There's always 60 minutes exactly in one hour, but we've got, three sig figs here. And then over here, looks like we have four sig figs. So it seems to me like our final answer should have how many sig figs? Three or four? Three. 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 Exactly. So I go ahead and I would underline all of these and I'd say, well, the one to the right of it is less than five. So we're not going to round up. So I'm just gonna convert this and chop off everything on the end and say 0 0.277 miles per hour. I did wanna warn you, sometimes students will see me do practice problems like this and they start getting really bad anxiety and they're like, I don't even know how to start a problem like that. What I tell students is this is more difficult than what I normally would give you on an exam or a homework, but if you can do a problem like this, you've mastered unit conversions. So I always challenge students to get to the point where they can solve problems like this on their own, but don't let this um, kind of get that spiral of anxiety going, because I know that's not a fun feeling. All right, the next one and the last one are a little bit easier. I'd say that was the hardest one on the set. 
So the price of gas in Belgium is 1.23 euros per liter. So I'll put that on the bottom. Let's actually move this up. For one liter. And we need to find the price of gas in dollars per gallon. So let's first find a conversion from euros to dollars. I don't know what it is right now because it actually fluctuates by day, but we're gonna assume that it's $1 equals 0.75937. So we'll go ahead and write that in. So one dollar equals zero point seven five nine three seven euro. Whoops. I'm not very good at drawing the euro symbol. You'll have to forgive me. <laughs> All right, so we've got that. And then it looks like we also need to convert liters to gallons, right? And if we go and look at the chart, it says that 3.785 liters is equal to one gallon. Okay, so we should be set now. First thing I would do is just pick one I want to convert. Doesn't really matter if we cancel out euros or liters first. You can do either way, but I'll just pick euros. So I'll pick euros on bottom. And we know that up here, the number that's paired with the euros unit is 0. Point, whoop, sorry, wrong side, 0. 0.75937. And this is equal to $1. So now we've canceled out our euros and we're left with dollars. But we're not quite done. We need to cancel out liters. And should I put liters on top or bottom here? Top, exactly, because it's on the bottom down here. We need to put it on the top for our conversion. It needs to always be on the opposite side. So I'll put liters here and gallons on the bottom. And we know that the 3.785 should go with the liter unit. And one will go with the gallon unit. So now we can cancel out liters and liters and we're left with the units dollars over gallons. And let's go ahead and plug that all in. So I've got 1.23 times one times 3.785. So that's my numerator. And then I'll divide by my denominator in parentheses. So in parentheses, I'll put one times 0.75937 times one. And I'm getting in again, a big number, 6.1308058. And this would be dollars per gallon. But how many sig figs should we have? We should have three, right? That's the fewest number of sig figs here. And in this case, it makes a lot of intuitive sense. Usually we don't go beyond the, the cents place when we're talking about dollars. So in this case, we would say, this should be $6.13 per gallon. Has anybody ever uh, been to a European country and bought gas? It's, it's pretty shocking because you're like, oh, wow, that's cheap. And then you do the math and you're like, oh, wow, that's really expensive. Um, it has been it, talked about going to Germany and buying a $9 beer that was not a $9 beer because yeah. of uh, the conversion rate. Yeah, my wife and I, we just, uh, for our honeymoon, actually, we went around Iceland and drove around the whole country. And man, the gas in Iceland was something else. But yeah, it was worth, worth it to see Iceland. <laughs> All right, last one. And then We'll probably stop there because people are, I'm assuming, tired of unit conversions at this point. Um, a sample of an unknown metal has a mass of 35.4 grams and a volume of 3.11 centimeters cubed. Calculate the density of the metal. And then it asks, will this object sink or float in water? 
So in our lecture, we defined density as what unit over what unit? Does anybody remember? Mass over volume. Yeah, mass over volume. Okay, and in this problem, they actually give you the mass. They say that the mass is 35.4 grams. And the volume, they say is 3.11 centimeters cubed, right? So they give you both of these. The question is, do we need to do any conversions to solve the last part of the problem? I don't think so, because they've got grams and centimeter cubed for the thing that we're comparing against. So what I would do is just solve this math problem, because it has the same units as the units that we're comparing against. And I would get 11, 0.3826 grams over centimeters cubed. But we're not quite done. We can only have three sig figs, right? So I've got three sig figs here, but then this number is greater than five. So we need to round this one up. So what I would do is I would change this to 11.4 grams per centimeter cubed as my final answer. All right, so now the last one's a little bit abstract. Will this sink or float in water? And the easy way to think about this is does it have a higher or lower density? Seems to me that it's got much higher density. It's much greater than one, right? So I'll just make a note here. Larger density than water. And if it's more dense, do more dense things sink or float? Sink. Sink, exactly. Perfect. So that's really it for the unit conversions. How's everyone feeling? Tired? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, one of the things students told me in surveys from the spring um, was learning online is completely different than taking a face-to-face -face class and your brain gets full a lot faster because your brain just doesn't work the same way at home, right? Um, and that's one reason why I did the mini lectures. And I would really encourage students to try to do bite-sized chunks of studying rather than trying to cram everything the night before a homework or quiz because it's just too much to do at home, there's so many unusual stressors with this pandemic. Um, so the more you can spread it out, the more manageable it will all become. And hopefully we'll have happier, more productive students <laughs> and professors for that matter. <laughs> Any other questions, concerns, comments? Um, for the quiz, is it going to be mainly like these kind of questions? Yeah, so honestly, the quiz will be a lot like the homework questions. So if you do the homework, you'll see kind of the formatting. Um, I always tell students on a quiz, try to treat it like a paper quiz. Um, jot down all of your work, because it's really easy if you're just holding a calculator and trying to do it in your head to mess up a unit conversion, for example. Um, so it's a lot easier if you have scratch paper, um, and just kind of plan out your time um, to not make silly mistakes that way. Because quite often students uh, will tell me, I missed a bunch of problems, but I knew how to do them. I just was going too fast. Um, so don't let the time limit really uh, freak you out. Um, there's only five problems on the quiz. So it's not a lot of problems. Any other questions? I actually had a question about the lab. So um, what if you don't have like a graduated cylinder? <laughs> oh yeah. In fact, um, let's go ahead and pull that up. And I'm gonna stop recording right now too. <laughs>